Hi ladies, this is a lesson for March 26th. We're working on epicenters, finding the distance from the epicenter to the seismic station. So just a quick review. We went over earthquakes yesterday. We went over um, the pressure building up on the rocks, enough for them to snap. And when they snap, an earthquake happens. All earthquakes happen at fault lines. There are three different types of faults. We have a normal fault where the pressures and the rocks are pulling away from each other and one side of the rock slips down. We have a reverse fault where the pressures and the rocks are pushing together and one side slips up. And then we have a strike slip fault where the pressures and the rocks are moving in opposite directions. And I just went through some pictures of strike uh, faults with you. And you need to definitely know that the most famous fault in the United States is the San Andreas Fault. And it runs, it runs with the boundary of the Pacific and the North American plate. Okay. Uh, what else did we go over? Went over seismic waves. The P waves are the fastest. They get their first and their transverse waves. We went over S waves. They're slower. They move as compressional waves and only go through solids. And then we went over surface waves. They're the oldest, uh, the oldest, they're the slowest and the largest waves. So they're the most destructive because they move the crust of the earth. And then I showed you two videos. And then we talked about uh, what a seismograph is. A seismograph is the instrument that's used to record the magnitude of the earthquakes. And there it is. And it's basically just a pen or a marker suspended in the air. As the ground moves underneath it, it makes the waves. All right, so today we're going to start off with a movie or clip. The clip is from the movie San Andreas. And um, I will, I'll just commentate as we go along. Okay, I'm going to show you clips of the movie San Andreas. Um, even though this is very, very exaggerated, this is as if this was the big, biggest one that they could ever have. There's a lot of good visuals in here. So, all right, here we go. They already had little earthquakes. What is it? That did actually happen. Look at those surface waves. Look at those surface waves. That's what it looks like. Did you miss it? Hold on. Let me go. Let me go back. Let me go back. So the the Bay Bridge did actually fall apart during an earthquake. Here are those surface waves. You see them? Yeah, they're so crazy. So you know we're gonna keep watching right now. When you have a fault line as big as the San Andreas fault, there could be a very major earthquake like this.
And there I am. So you see lots of fires happening, gas lines rip and break, explosions happen. All of this is real. All of these are real things that could happen. All right. So we have... Where is it? Okay. So next, epicenter locations. Seismic waves take time to travel from one point to another, right? So the earthquake happens, the wave is released, and then it takes time as it travels, right? So there are seismic stations located all over the world that record arrival times of seismic waves. Basically, they're just computers in the ground that are sending information back to scientists. The longer it takes for a wave to reach a seismic station, the further away the epicenter is. So if I walked from like my desk in the front of the room to the door, that's going to take a longer time than me walking from my desk in the front of the room to the little desk on the on the side that I have there, my little side desk, right? So the time that it takes me to walk to that little side desk is telling scientists that I walked a shorter distance, that I'm not far away. The longer it takes, sorry about that, scientists take readings from three different seismic stations and draw a circle with the radius equal to the distance from the earthquake. Where the circles overlap is the epicenter. So let's look up here. Here's Salt Lake City. They received uh, seismic waves and they know that those seismic waves came from 1,800 kilometers away. Houston seismic waves came from 800 kilometers away and Savannah's seismic stations came from 1,300 kilometers away. So what they did was they drew a, a radius, a line, um, and drew a circle, all three of them, and where they intersect, that is where the earthquake happened. Okay? Now, this is something that you are going to need for the Earth Science Regions next year. We're not going to be drawing the circles, but we are going to be doing this next piece that I linked up uh, with the Instagram account that has the videos on it for you. So th this is just a picture of what seismic stations look like. If the earthquake happens here, waves are going to be flowing out and it's going to be picked up from the seismic station and the seismic station is going to send the data back to the computers. That's it. All right, so this is the important part. This is the important part. Like I said, rewind it. You probably need this for your homework. If you don't want to go through the whole slideshow, I put the link up there already. Um, I put it up there yesterday and asked you to look at it. But you will need the Earth Science Reference Table, page 11. If you don't have a printer and you can't print it out, then have it up on your computer screen and just bring the paper up to your screen and mark the lines the best you can. So how can we determine how far away the epicenter is from a seismic station? I'm going to let this play through. Okay, how can we determine how far an epicenter is away from a seismic station? So let's pretend I'm at a seismic station. Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And then the P waves come. And then the S waves come. Okay, so I have a P wave and an S wave. Now this, remember, this is not the epicenter. This is at the seismic station. Let's say this is a seismic station in Boulder, Colorado. Okay, so this P wave reached Boulder, Colorado seismic station after one hour and two minutes. The S wave reached Boulder, Colorado seismic station after one hour and let's say six minutes. All right, so to determine how far away it is, we are going to need the Earth Science Reference Table. I'm gonna move this aside and have this reference table and I also have a 
a scrap piece of paper. Okay. The first thing we need to do is determine the difference between the two times. So the difference between one hour and two minutes and one hour and six minutes is four minutes. Four minutes, that's our magic number right now. So let's look at this earth science reference table. And just go through the parts. I see a line here that says P wave, a line here that's labeled S for the S wave. And then we have the Y axis is time travel in minutes. And the gradient looks like each line goes up by 20 seconds. Two, 20 seconds, 40 seconds, one minute. One minute, 20 seconds, one minute, 40 seconds, two minutes. Two minutes, 40 seconds, two minutes. Sorry, two minutes, 20 seconds, two minutes, 40 seconds, three minutes, and on. And then here we have the epicenter distance times 10 to the third power, which just simply means add three zeros. So instead of two, this is 2,000 kilometers, okay? Here I can see these lines go up by 200 kilometers each. So 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000 kilometers. 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000 kilometers, and so on. Now, let's get back to our waves. Four minutes was the difference, right? So what we're gonna do is very simple. Take a scrap piece of paper with a straight edge. Okay, so I have my paper. Remember that the time, the difference between the two ways was four minutes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of paper. I hope you all can see this. I'm gonna put it here against the y-axis. And I'm gonna mark where the zero is, and that's gonna be my P wave. And then four minutes up, I'm gonna mark that, and that's gonna be my S wave. Okay? Now, very simple from here. Keep your paper straight, and you're just going to Bring it up the chart until this line touches here, while at the same time this line touches here. And it looks like it happens right here. You can see that. So I'm just gonna bring my finger down, and that is 2,200, 400, 600. 2,600 kilometers away the epicenter is the epicenter distance. It's 2,600 kilometers away. So the answer would be 2,600 kilometers away, the epicenter of that earthquake. Now, what if I had different information? What if someone said to me, well, I just know that the distance from the epicenter to the seismic station was 3,000 kilometers away. Okay, we can do that too. So we'll use this side. So 3,000, we'll go put our paper on the 3,000 line. And we will mark where the P wave is. And we will mark where the S wave hits the paper. Not an estimate, exactly where it hits the paper. Okay? And then, to take this, the P goes at the zero. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. The P goes at the zero. And the S lines up with, looks like four minutes, just shy of four minutes and 40 seconds. Maybe about four minutes and actually right in the middle, 20, 40, 
right in the middle of 20 or 40 would be another 10, right? So 4 minutes and 30 seconds would be the answer. That's the time difference between the P wave and the S wave. All right, so I know that's a lot, but you need to learn how to do that. So rewind the video as many times as you need until you figure it out. You can use this right here if you are not able to print it out, the or science reference table, and just put a piece of paper right up to the screen and mark, mark where the um, P wave and S wave are. So there's eight problems on your homework get to it if you have some questions about it you know meet me in the google meets and you can ask me some questions or email me the questions all right all right have a good day